What's up everyone? Lance Hedrick here and I'm accompanied by Dr. Samo Smirke. He is a research associate at the Zurich University for Applied Sciences. So today we're going to take a look at water chemistry and how water affects coffee and extraction, knowing that it's over 98% of filter coffee and around 90% of espresso. It's very important to understand and control your water, an overlooked variable that has a massive effect on your final cup. So we're going to look uh, first and foremost at what buffers kind of do, and then we're going to look at magnesium and calcium. But I'm going to go ahead and give the microphone, proverbial microphone, to uh, Dr. Smarkin. Hey, thanks, Lance. That's, um, I think the water is kind of a very exciting topic. Mm -hmm. We've studied since maybe five, six years, mm -hmm. uh, focused to how water relates to coffee, right? Yeah. That's about the time when, when really in the coffee world, people start to talk about water because before water was just like, yeah, it's water, you know, it's like 98% of coffee, but yeah. don't care about what is uh, what is in this water. Oh, sure. Yeah? Because the water is mainly water, the TDS of water is very, very low, but yeah. it has a very strong impact on the coffee as we learned. And now more and more people are realizing this because it's a very profound impact, right? Yeah. What we learned is that there's two, two main things that you mentioned. Uh, buffering capacity and the minerals in, in, in the water, right? Yes. So this is the thing to understand about water is that there's things that interact with your coffee. Yes. Right? So so we have buffering capacity. That's probably the most, um, the, the, the strongest impact that everybody can very easily feel when you have hard water or soft water when you brew your yes. coffee. Mm -hmm. and especially filtered coffee is very sensitive because the filtered coffee is kind of very dilute. Yeah. Uh, so the acids in filtered coffee are, are, are can the same strength as in mm -hmm. espresso if you measure pH of your you know you have a, like a pH meter you yeah. measure pH of espresso and you measure pH of, uh, of your uh, filter brew mm -hmm. it's about the same surprisingly okay. right yeah despite knowing that the the filter will be about five times more diluted than espresso in terms of, of concentration of your TDS right yeah. so so therefore filter will have much will be much more sensitive to to the to the water composition mm. and therefore it's a kind of very very easy if you have wrong water with a lot of hardness to buffer out the acids in, in your, uh, uh, from your coffee in your brew, right? Gotcha. So what he's saying is essentially buffers, buffering has pr probably the biggest impact on your coffee. It's more so on filter than espresso. Filter and espresso have same pHs roughly, um, and if they have a similar extraction yield, they can still have a different TDS, obviously. And so the impact is much harsher on the more diluted one, which is filter coffee. So you can completely buffer out the acidity in there, which is what's bringing the nuance and the delicacy yeah. and the, the tasty bits to that. So yeah. could you explain just briefly for people who may not know, what, what do you mean when you say buffer? Buffer, yeah, that's a, that's kind of a chemical term, mm -hmm. buffer. A buffer is a, uh, the ability of a solution to resist a pH change. Okay. So so if something has a buffer capacity, it means that it doesn't like changes in pH. So it means yeah. that the water has a good buffer capacity, it's like strong alkalinity, yeah. it means that it doesn't like to change pH to lower and then when mm -hmm. you add coffee, coffee is acidic, yep. you know, it wants to lower the pH of the whole beverage, right? Yes. So if the water has really strong uh, buffer capacity, then it doesn't change the pH so much low. So it does, yep. does not, so the, the, the acids react with carbonates from water mm -hmm. and they neutralize each other. Okay, so, the, so, the so you lose the acids, you don't have the acids anymore in, in your coffee if the water is too hard. Yeah, so the, the carbonates are reacting with the acids and can essentially negate them, they buffer them? Yeah, they buffer them. So right? when we're talking pH, we're talking of a scale from 0 to 14. From 0 to 7, it's acidic. From 7 to 14, it's alkaline. And so uh, what he's saying is coffee tends to be acidic. And so, uh, but if you have too hot, hard of a water, those carbonates can negate the, the function of the acidity, which is a, a sensory uh, experience, right? Yes, exactly. So when we talk about acidity in coffee, what is really important, why this is such a big factor that we don't want to buffer out our acids, right? Yeah. We don't want to neutralize them. It's because it, in specialty coffee, if we ask people how much they like coffee, yeah. and that we give them different coffees, and we look at certain scores, mm -hmm. then we uh, give them, uh, uh, ask them, sorry, to ask them, uh, how do they rate the acidity of this coffee? Mm -hmm. and, and then we had, get another set of numbers, yeah. And then we compare those two sets, we see they match perfectly. Yeah. So it means that even though, you know, there will be maybe different sensory profiles in terms of aroma and so, but, but, but when you look at the acidity scores, they're very much related to the likability scores. Yeah. So even if a coffee has a um, very good uh, aroma composition, mm -hmm. but it, it doesn't have acidity, yeah. people will not rate it high because mm -hmm. the acidity is an important part of the whole, whole flavor experience of a coffee. 
because the, the taste works together with the aroma, and this is what brings uh, then uh, the, the pleasure in drinking coffee. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's why you you also if you if you mute the acids, you also mute the aromas of of the coffee because you perceive both together. Your brain works with tongue and your nose together yeah. to perceive a coffee as being a very vibrant, likable, and it's importance of aroma and the the acids, right? So if, yeah. you, if you lose acids, then also the vibrancy of aroma is kind of reduced. Yeah. Because it all works together. So obviously in darker roasts, you're going to have a lower perception of acidity, just in general, right? But there is still acidity that is creating that flavor profile, correct? Yes, definitely. Even, even you know, um, you, you ask people, ah, oh, uh, commodity coffee drinkers like oh I really don't like uh, acidity in coffee mm. but if you take a very dark roasted coffee okay. and we ask people who really like only dark roasted coffee mm -hmm. and then we ask them, we ask them do, do you like acidic coffee and they say no but when, and they like a dark roasted coffee but mm. even if you take a look at the dark roasted coffee this acid composition the pH the saturatable acidity the yes. amount of acids it still it still has them it's still acidic it's not a big difference between light roast and, and dark roast you know mm. like there's a clear difference, yeah. But even a dark roast, and even a coffee that's not considered acidic, like a natural Brazil yeah. dark roast, still has a considerable amount of acids mm -hmm. and acidity, right? Yeah. So you're not so, you are so some of the acidity can be muted through roasting, but you're not really yeah. negating the presence of the acidity. You're, you're not negating the presence. So acidity is even for for dark roast drinkers, it's a crucial part of the the experience of a coffee in terms of the sensory perception. Gotcha. So even dark roasted coffee lovers love acidity. That's <laughs> yes. what I'm hearing. Yes, you are hearing this, but they don't realize. They don't realize. So <laughs> even they need to understand that buffer is important because you want the acidity for a lively cup even if you like darker roasted coffees exactly right? yes yes yeah let's move into the the normal um the normal factors of hardness that people use the normal chemicals are uh some form of magnesium and some form of calcium what i have here is magnesium uh chloride and calcium chloride uh, but you know people what are other alternatives people use magnesium you could use ma uh, magnesium sulfate cal um, sulfate. calcium sulfate yeah uh, yeah, magnesium sulfate is uh, no That's problem, typical. right? But then yeah. there might be some sort of flavor uptaste. But yeah. Again, things are not really known, right? Exactly. Not everything is known when you start to look at these these uh, these salts and mm -hmm. adding them, how they relate to the sensory. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of from clear from the tasting that we were doing, you know, yeah. by based on experience empirically, they have a huge impact on yeah. on uh, the perception, right? The, their amount has an impact, and the ratio between magnesium and calcium has a big impact, right? Okay. Yeah. So, so anecdotally, I've heard and I, I've experienced that magnesium brings vibrant acidity, vibrant fragrance out, yep. and calcium is dull, muted, chalky. But yep. uh, I heard from you that you have a bit of a difference. Yeah, what I've done different, in, uh, different, in, uh, in my double opinion. blind tasting, I had more complexity with with uh, magnesium, but I had a little bit more brightness with calcium. So uh, the, the combination of potassium bicarbonate and uh, calcium chloride was giving me most kind of like bright floral fruity cups. Uh, in, in multiple double blind cuppings with a partner who was cupping as well. But then that's the thing is, uh, and Samo can confirm, but there's there's no objective study right now as to which of these minerals is giving what in the final cup. Now, an interesting question is, do we know if the water composition is important for the actual extraction or could they be, after, or could they be added post extraction? So there is, uh, there's some knowledge about this. Okay. So there was a very recently one uh, bachelor thesis from a student published okay. that did this test trying to see from a chemical point of view, not doing sensory experiments, mm -hmm. but from a chemical point of view, does it make a difference if you add them before extraction and after extraction? Yes. And the result was that there's no difference. So you could brew with like distilled water and then yes. add they, afterwards. Yes, they actually brewed with distilled water and they added afterwards and they even added a lot afterwards, like more than you would no normally add, like 10 times more also. Yeah. Than that what you would normally use in your brewing butter and was still the same effect and then kind of there was some re re reactions chemical reactions with these uh, minerals with the um, uh, acids in the coffee okay. forming complexes and therefore there was less availability of, of, uh, of acids in in the beverage so so it means that there was a reaction with uh, coffee components that yeah. you brew uh, into your beverage mm -hmm. with the minerals and that has an impact on uh, on on availability of those components of coffee. Okay. So how does this relate to sensory? That's mm -hmm. a really good question because there's very little systematic studies on this uh, available. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's just really a shot in the dark. Anything out there would be more anecdotal than anything. Yes, I think we're really working here with some anecdotal evidence. Even this is only one study, which 
uh, probably was executed very well, but yeah. it's only one study, so it might have a different different coffee, different roast level, etc. Mm. Uh, but then again, we're also working with a lot of um, empirical uh, evidence, mm -hmm. right? A lot of experience, what people do and what people then, um, like, you know, different recipes yeah. and have different outcomes. But, but really systematically taking different coffees, different processing mm -hmm. methods, you know, we don't have really a good picture of what is happening. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So uh, as like a wrap up, essentially what you have is the most important part of the water in coffee extraction as far as the sensory part is definitely the buffering agent. So your bicarbonates, whether it's potassium bicarbonate or sodium bicarbonate, but that's going to be controlling essentially the prevalence of the acidity sens uh, uh, sensorily in your cup by the end. And so if you're dialing in your coffee, whether it's dark or light roast, the amount of buffer is going to play a massive role on that final cup. Whereas when we're playing with hardness, a lot of that is still up in the air as far as the efficacy of each of them, but it does it does objectively contribute to the flavor profile. Yes, that's definitely, the effect is so clear that we can say it's objective. Yes. Uh, objectively has an effect. But yes. What exactly it is? Is more difficult it's to say. It's more difficult to say, yes. So whenever we're talking in terms of the total PPM of, of a liquid, the more important number is the PPM of the buffer as far as yes. like what we can trace. Yes, definitely. That's the first thing that you want to make sure that you're, you're in good numbers. It's the buffer, the alkalinity, mm -hmm. carbonate hardness. Yep. It's kind of the same thing with yep. different names. And then the second thing is the total hardness, the calcium and magnesium content. Absolutely. Awesome. So. Hopefully that was helpful. Of course, there's a lot more to be known about water chemistry, which Samo is actually currently working on a course for, and I'm gonna let him tell you about that real quick. Yes, so what, what, I've, uh, what I've learned that despite so much talk about uh, coffee and water, there's still a bit of fundamental um, lack of knowledge in, in the water chemistry and understanding the water chemistry. Therefore, with, uh, I partnered with Coffee Knowledge Hub, and there will be a course about water and coffee available there for everybody to join who wants to join it. And uh, part of the course is understanding the chemistry, the fundamentals, uh, the treatment of water, but then also taste coffees uh, prepared with different waters as in terms of a um, tasting kit and discuss why we uh, tasted what we tasted. So there will be a bit of um, theory, uh, practical part, and then back theory, explaining what, what we're tasting, what is actually happening, to try to bring uh, water, understanding of water and coffee even closer to the community. So class, you don't want to miss, I'll put down information down below, and whenever it's live, I'll change that in the caption. But uh, anyway, thank you so much, doctor. Thank you, Lance. It no was matter. a wonderful time. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Always learn something new. And uh, hope you enjoyed this. Brew something tasty today. Take into account the buffer.